Previously on Am I a Cupid or a God? Rosa waited for Mother to answer with a vicious, vicious voice to burst out screaming at her cheekiness. But no voice came. Rosa smiled to herself. The light dimmed. A low hush descended on the pews. Soon, Catherine entered, clad in a loveliest gown and an even lovelier smile. She was beautiful. She belonged on the stage. The lights shone on her, but they paled in comparison to her radiance. Catherine bowed to the audience and took a seat in front of the piano. She began to play. Rosa gripped the handle of her seat. She felt surges of emotion with every note. A kind of energy passed through her, touching her skin and making her break into goosebumps. Oh, Catherine. Rosa hadn't known of such an effect before this moment. Music that could so strike the heart as if it was fiddling with the soul. It was different from practice different from when she was performing in front of smaller groups. This was a stage, and here was a woman with strings. She was tugging the right keys, touching your heart and electrifying your soul. Rosa realized she wasn't alone in this feeling. The whole room was mesmerized. She looked at the lady beside her seat. She had her hand to her mouth open. A teardrop dangled precariously on her eye. The man to her left seemed to have forgotten to blink. Rosa beamed and savored a rush of kinship with them. They were experiencing the same emotion with her. It made her love them just a little bit. Rosa closed her eyes and savored the night. A bead of sweat fell from Catherine's chin. She was out of her body now. Her stress from the beginning of the show had thawed and turned into passion. It ran down her fingers to the keys. It did not escape Catherine's notice that most people in the crowd came to the show to gawk at her. Catherine Parade, the one that the infamous Marquise de Gaulle had been courting for years. Didn't he pay for this event? Lucky broad. Catherine Parade, I heard she was some pianist. Any good? Who knows? Must be. If even that Marquise is chasing her. Catherine Parade. Some female pianist. Pretty face, nice flesh on her. Let us watch her show. Her fingers caress the keys playing them with the force of her heart. Did she play to prove them wrong? Her music saturated the theater with her favor. No, fever. No, not to prove them wrong. To set it right. Catherine Parade is my name. I am more than just a pretty face. And I am playing this piece for you. It's my gift. Let me touch her soul. Rosa felt her eyes get moist. This was Catherine's heart transcribed into music. All energy and beauty with the strength of the wind. The mischief of the sudden gale that whips at ladies' skirt and tips gentlemen's hats. The cold breeze that carried the loneliness of the coming winter. Everyone in the audience felt it. Rosa searched for Gulliman's face in the darkness. She couldn't see him clearly, but it didn't matter. She knew what he was feeling. She felt it too. 
Rosa's heart began to ache. It was a thing she didn't know how to name. After the show, Rosa greeted Catherine in her backstage dressing room. Oh, you look nice, girl. Yeah. Anyway, she was smothered in flowers from the audience. Sweat glistened on her forehead. Catherine gave her a tight hug. Congratulations, Kath. You were marvelous on stage. Thank you, Rosie. Catherine covered her cheeks with her hands. How old is she right now? I, I feel like she's all grown up. Yeah, she's probably like 19 or 18 or maybe 20. Should I change her voice? Yeah, why not? Uh, I'm still shaking. The excitement from stage hasn't left. Look at my hands. <laughs> oh dear. So, I would call this show a success, yes? Pour the champagne, Sherry. It is the night to remember. Catherine and Rosa hugged again. Let me just finish up here, Rosa. Then we'll celebrate properly. Two young, ravishing ladies sampling the best of what Paris has to offer. I like it. Rosa laughed. Just don't let go of my hand. You might be... You might get lost being so starry-eyed. She was teasing, but smiling brightly all the same. I would never! Anyway, shall I meet you outside in a few minutes? Very well. I'll see you later. Rosa was thankful to leave the backstage area. She had almost forgotten her anxiety during the show, but the backstage was an ill reminder of the crowd. In fact, yeah... Nice place for a backstage, I mean, damn. Anyway, she looked forward to the night ahead, wondering vaguely why she hadn't mentioned Gulliman's presence to Kath. She shrugged it off. It had simply slipped her mind, that was all. Catherine went back to her dressing room, humming as she was about to grab her coat. She wasn't the least bit tired. Vision of City... Exploring new sites and gaining experience made her giddy, giddy, I mean, with excitement. It will end the night on the best note, she was sure. A small knock interrupted her thoughts. Who's there? Catherine turned around and a cheerful smile frozen on her face. The Marquis peeked from the open door and stepped inside. Hello, Kath. A tingling passed through Catherine's neck. Although she was aware he had returned, this was the first time she'd seen him in two years. After she rebuked his intentions of wooing her, Catherine shook her head at the memory. They grew up together. It was normal to develop feelings for someone you shared most of your life with, was it not? Yet Catherine had promised herself not to dabble with Marquis. With all the rumor and the past flings, it felt like she knew too much. Too complicated. She had reasoned. The rumor was still alive in some circles. But hadn't Gulime come clean with his romantic escapades? Hadn't he vowed to be faithful since he had made his intentions clear? Who to believe? Perhaps it was possible that... Catherine pushed away the insinuation of that last thought and rearranged her face into a merry smile. She courtesies. My lord, Marquis! Thank you for coming! The last bit came out too loud in her ears. It felt like her voice was compensating. She suppressed a groan. I hope you find the show satisfactory. My lord, Marquis? What happened to Ghoulie monster. At once, the memories flooded her mind. That used to be her greeting every time she had visited him back then. She would scream that when she saw him, right before she flung her arms around his neck. Catherine didn't know what to do. Suddenly, her hands. The hands that had never betrayed her felt like they belonged to someone else. 
What? She cleared her throat and felt a smile harden on her face. Pardon my past slight, sire. I was a bit of a precautious child. After all, I must give my due respect to the sponsor of this event. Thank you, by the way. I didn't have to be so extravagant. Wasn't it your dream to play in Paris, Kath? I thought you'd debut would be the perfect opportunity to fulfill that dream. <gasps> Why the door closed? Well, the Marquis stepped into her quarters and closed the door. Uh huh? Catherine flinched, afraid that the small room would draw them even closer. Just the effect that he wanted, probably. The sly fox. She floundered for a bit and contented herself in fussing with the flower on the table. God damn it, by damn! Anyway, she should chase him down. Or she should chase him out, I mean. Why wasn't she chasing him out? Merde, Catherine. Uh, I didn't think you'd be attending tonight, sire. Weren't you, like, traveling? Yes, I was. But I wouldn't miss your concerto for the whole of France. You let me step forward. And it, and it seems, my investment, were well placed. Gooly man drew closer to Catherine, huh? So near that she could smell the mint in his breath. He appeared to reach out to her face, but changed direction at the last minute. Uh oh, these flowers are from the Duke. How pretty. He examined the card dangling a hair away from Catherine's ear, trying to look fascinated by the piece of decorated paper. Then he stepped back, grinning like an idiot. Uh-huh. Er, uh, he really has great taste. Wherever did you learn that, muckhead? If he thought that kind of ploy would make her swoon, then he was fucking dead wrong. In fact, all it made her want to do was wipe that stupid grin off of his damn face with that backside of the face. Yes, he does, doesn't he? She gritted her teeth, unable to take the ascetic edge of her voice. It wouldn't be so hard. All she had to do was grab the neck of the expensive vase and fling it at his head. She wasn't sure if the vase would break. Maybe not. Maybe yes. Maybe she would need to hit him again for the full effect. Catherine, uh, did you hear what I just said? Huh? I said, now that I'm back in town, would you consider playing for me again? It was part of our original ar arrangement, after all. She felt the tendons in her neck tighten. I have a full schedule this week, sire, but I'll let you know when I'm free. Oh. Sire, I must retire for the night. I'm exhausted from my performance, after all. Excuse me. Catherine turned around and went for her coat, but she felt Gulimi grabs her hand. W wait, uh, um... They stared at each other for a couple of seconds. Gulimay looked like he was about to say something. His mouth opened and closed as if debating the correct words in his head. But he just dropped Catherine's hand a moment later. Uh, I'm sorry. You're right. You must be tired. His shoulders dropped. Catherine felt a tinge of disappointment, but she ignored it quickly. Gulimay let out a sigh. You know I'm not... You know I am not good at this, Catherine. Oh, what do I know? You seem to do just fine. You have an amazing track record. Huh? Catherine folded her arms over her chest with a pout. Oh, uh... That, that, that is just because of my face. What? Most people think I'm very deep and thoughtful when 
I stare at them like this. I just run with it. Okay. Catherine bit her lips to prevent the chuckle from escaping. But the laughter burst out from her. He hadn't changed at all. Before she could stop herself, a mischievous smile appeared on her lips. No, no. Actually, uh, it is your inability to make big gestures, Gilly. Huh? Well, look at you. She copied his tight, alert posture. You stand stiff as a board. I guess it fools people into believing you are a graceful, dashing soul. Gulime, Gulime made a pout. I am dashing, though. Maybe. Au contraire, monsieur. I did have the misfortune of being victim to your dancing. Must you always bring that up? It was a long time ago. He looked so distressed that Catherine couldn't help but tease him further. I mounted the death of my little toe, sire. I like that toe. You know? It was a traumatic experience. Before long, they were laughing. Like it was the most natural thing in the world. When did it change? Hadn't it always been like this? Catherine settled back into her own skid. Milling the confusion in her vines. Kath. She looked up at him. Her own emotions stung her. You can't keep running away from me. She sighed deeply. Her hands tightened around her resolve for lack of a solid thing to hold on to. Perhaps not, but I have already given you an answer. I am aware. I have tried to accept it. Please don't take offense, but I thought it would be easy. I left to clear my head, to fill my mind with other things. Traveling usually does the trick. For a while, at least, I thought I was successful. But even during my trip, I would catch myself thinking such absurd thing like... I wonder what Kath will say when she sees that. No, I don't think Catherine will like this too much. Hmm, well, Kath used to say. It was funny, but also a little infuriating to know that he had never left my mind. So I wish I knew how to do this. I am... He sighed. I am too used to people leaving me, that I do not know how to quit on my own. It must bother you, the amount of lovers I had in the past. I'm sorry for that. I almost wish I really was that adept. But like I have told you, most were simple rumors. The rest were people... Realizing I am not as interesting as they had initially thought. Gilly May. They never say s they never stay long, Kath. One could say I am amazing with first expressions. There is a nagging feeling that that's all I am ever good for. A sort of exotic trophy people like to collect for its sake, and then put aside when it's Novelty expires. I can't blame them. By now, I'm quite sure that I am what is wrong. I must be better at letting people go. But you, please don't make me let go. You see through me, Kath. In your eyes, I feel like I am somebody worth loving. It is any wonder I'd like to continue thinking of you. Fondly? Old habits die hard, I suppose. Catherine bit her lip. Those are impressive words, sire. But do you have a point? My point? Er... Uh, it's simple, really. I... 
I don't think I'll be able to stop my feelings for you. You may reject me as many times as you wish. I will not change. I have already come to the conclusion that I don't mind. He shrugged. So, I suppose that you either get used to me chasing you, or you gave in to my dashing toe, mashing charms. Catherine chuckled despite herself. Or I could just kill you with the Duke's fashionable vase! Please, do not give my superior the pleasure. Pleasure, I mean. I would rather you rip my heart out of my chest and offer it as a dark sacrifice to the gods. Gory! Very poetic, dashing point for you! You think so? I've been reading a lot of romantic novels lately. What kind of roma- romantic novels are you th- even thinking about? Or was that romance novel? Pardon me, romance novel! Anyway, I figured I must learn to be more suave to make the lady of my dreams swoon. Is it working? Catherine laughed. Hardly! I believe this is how they do it in the big finale. Guime cleared his throat and knelt down on one knee. He took Catherine's hand awkwardly, trying to act as natural as he could. Yeah. This is a nice scene. But for some reason, some shit's gonna go down really bad, really fast. Cause last time it was kinda like this, fuck. Hopefully not. Ah, but anyway, still, it's a nice scene. It's beautiful too, I mean, damn. I feel like I'm watching, uh, uh, what was that, Disney? Um, Beauty and the Beast, yeah, for some reason. Ah, anyway. His serious face made Catherine burst out laughing. Cooly Folly, what in the world are you doing, idiot? Stop laughing, madame. I must try this at least once. I'm simply concerned for an older gentleman and his knee. Will you be able to stand up from the, that position later, given your obvious grace? Gulimei chuckled. Terrible. Dare you call me an old man? I don't look my age, you know. Sure, sure. Oh, stop laughing, will you? I'm trying to concentrate. He cleared his throat again. Well, uh, mademoiselle, Catherine Perrier allow me an audience tonight. As such, perhaps she might allow me to stay by her side for a while longer. Oh, it would make me... No, it would make me a very happy man. It was sappy and ridiculous, and yet hearing the words did steer Catherine's heart. They were giggling, like fools now, like children, her heart heavy with love for him. Love? Did she just think love? Or of course she did. She had always loved him. Why was she fighting her feelings again? The reason seems unclear all of a sudden. All right, sire. Your gallantry has convinced this lady to accept your offer for tonight. She bowed with an extra, extra, exaggerated, I mean, courtesy. Gulimei took her hand theoretically as he stood up. This gentleman is relieved. He didn't have to sing. A few rules for tonight. As we are in Paris, you must be on your best behavior. No embarrassing jokes like making friends with the street mimes. Agreed. As such, I must retire by eight. Ten. Eight. Nine thirty. Nine! Take it or leave it! Gulimi grumbled, but Catherine just chuckled at his frustration. Fine! Or. <clears throat> Fine. 9.15 it is. Sire? I meant. I meant. 9 sharp! Gulimi face brightened like a little boy's. Oh, uh, I know where we can go. There is a quaint little piazza just south of here. They had a breathtaking view of the city. They're on a hill, you see. 
I know the owner personally, so we're already guaranteed the best seats. And they serve the best promise, the Tarek Grantiness. I don't know what is that and forget my pronunciation. Yeah, forget me, guys. Grantin again? If you continue eating that every opportunity you get, soon there will be no potatoes left in all the France. Catherine sighed. Why must he be so... This better not be a game like all your other flings, sire. I deserve to be treated like more than a prize. But Catherine watched Gulumi's face beam as he talked about the little house on the hill. How when the weather was perfect, the stars would soak the sky. She giggled to herself with fondness. What a dolt. A night in Paris and he would rather eat ch- cheesed potatoes. It was just like him to pick the stars instead of the city, wasn't it? It pleased her to know that she adored this side of him that others did not see. But was this the real him? Did she really see through him like he said? Or was this a face he put on for her sake? Like most flirts could. If it was... And she had been watching this face since she was a little girl. From all to admir- admiration, from friends to lovers. They had seen the best and worst of each other through the years. Surely there was something to that. Surely it couldn't all be a lie, right? I'm sorry, uh, I got carried away. Shall we go? Yes! Yes! Catherine grabbed her coat and Gulumi took her purse. Oh, uh, I almost forgot! Rosa is waiting outside! Then let us hurry and meet up with her. I haven't seen her for a long time. I miss her too. It will be a treat to spend the evening with two esteemed ladies. She'll be thrilled to see you! Just like old times. Us three? Yes! She slipped her hand on his arms nonchantly and caught Gulimi's smell to himself. At the very least, let the smell be real. Oh! What the?